Hey there everybody, it's Mecha Draco coming to you with another video. And in today's video, we're going to finally talk about Charlottesville. Maybe a little bit about Boston as well. So, to start off with before I do anything else, and we actually start getting into the, the conversation, I do obviously want to note that obviously Charlottesville and Boston has probably been talked about a lot already. Um, I'm aware that I'm not the first person to talk about it, and I'm aware this happened weeks ago. But this is something I feel like it needs to be talked about by everyone. So this is one of those things I really want to discuss. Uh, before I also get into that, I do want to let you guys know that I'm feeling a little sick. So I do apologize for the audio if it sounds like I'm got a stuffy nose, because I do. Um, it's just a simple cold, so it's no big deal. Uh, even if I'm still sick, I'll probably still be streaming on Monday. It might be shorter or something like that, but that was the main reason why I didn't come out with a video on Saturday. Now, let's go ahead and just start to get into this video and just get itself going. Charlottesville. Charlottesville, for those of you who don't know, uh, was an interesting and very, I would not call it a very good thing at all. I would, I would definitely have to say that it was a pretty deplorable thing on everyone's, everyone's side. For those of you who don't know about Charlottesville, there was a gathering in Charlottesville um, by the right. Uh, specifically, they were white nationalists, white uh, supremacists, white um, oriented individuals. There were obviously a few people there that were not, in fact, connected to Nazis or white supremacy or anything else along those lines um, but for the general most part most of the groups there were there for that particular reason um, the actual rally that was going on in that at that time was called unite the right um, there were many people there who were wielding nazi flags they were throwing up the hail hitler saw you know single and they were just there i saw a video not too long ago of one where it showed people saying Jews will not replace us, which was apparently actually a mantra that was once say, said by Nazis back in, I don't know, the 30s, I think. So it's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. Like this is one of those things where one of the worst things that's ever been alive in our in our in our world like that's existed in our world such as the kkk and the knots in nazis and other things like that have actually gained a following that's actually somewhat ridiculously large in number to the point where it's actually somewhat scary to think that there's even a reason to even believe that they were actually that they'd actually gather that many numbers that to believe that there'd be that many people who actually still agree with that particular viewpoint. Now, with that being said, uh, as I said, there were individuals who were there who were not affiliated with it. I don't disagree that their presence shows a bit of a an agreement with the Nazis' viewpoints. I don't disagree with the fact... The idea is, is that they were there. There were Nazis there. They clearly saw them. They weren't denouncing them. They were on their side. That's just as bad. Now, before I get too psycho crazy into just the Nazis and other things like that, I do want to let everyone know that I obviously don't see that it's just the right side's fault. The rally was put together legally it had all the sanctions that it needed it it was within its right to have its rally you know and by all legitimate by all legitimacy it should not have gone the way that it went it should have been a, a just a normal rally of people just walking down the road or whatever waving their Nazi flags and then that'd be the end of it and that's all that should have happened 
but Antifa and I guess Black Lives Matter I've heard apparently as well as well as a couple of other locations apparently went there to counter protest they also of course from what I've been told and from what I've read has and did in fact get their own permits and their own legal ability to be there you know their own right to be there and they and they had their own right to be there they had their own right to counter protest the rally uh, for Unite the Right. Unite the Right said that they were going to be there for the removal of the statue, statue of Robert E. Lee, but it's sort of like one of those, I don't really think that that's what they were actually there for. I think that they were more probably there to shout their own narrative. They were just using the Robert E. Lee thing as their cover, I guess you could call it. But the point that I'm trying to get at is, is that nobody was right in this situation, um, specifically. Uh, and that everyone was there, technically, legally. Like, no one was... Antifa was there legally, the Nazis were there legally, the white supremacists were all there. They were all there within their rights. They were all following within their rights. Now, I don't actually know what instigated the the riot itself i don't actually know what instigated the, the 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 combatants and such um obviously both sides showed up ready for a fight which it tells you one thing that at least to the to some degree anyways that both sides are to blame um because you see pictures of the nazis uh, the Nazis and the, the white supremacists and all these other groups that were there clearly dressed up in like body armor. Some of them had, you know, the shields, the, the little, like the little shields that they've been doing here recently and sticks and other things like that. And this is slowly and surely getting worse and worse and worse. And it's going to escalate one of these days. It's already, that's already a huge escalation as it is for the fact that somebody actually decided to drive a car through a crowd of people mind you that it wasn't it's not exactly like that but it's it's whatever the point is they clearly were there to actually instigate the fights but the thing is that though i saw you know the white supremacists and stuff like that all ready for a fight you can go look at the antifa stuff they all are in the exact same way dressed up in their normal uniforms wielding the shields wielding the sticks they all are ready for it they're ready for a fight they didn't go there for peaceful protest. They went there to start violence. Both sides did. And that's the reason why it's deplorable on both sides. And this is one of those things that I kind of don't understand where it came from. Um, the whole Trump thing, where he condemned both sides. What I can't stand about that is that it's a, it was a very logical statement. Both sides were wrong. Both sides should be condemned for what they did. For how they instigated the violence. And just because he didn't name the KKK, white supremacy, Nazis, individually, in particular. Because, you know, we, we, have, to, we have to be told that by the president. The president has to use those exact words. Because, you know, there's an, a riot with two sides in it, and when you say both sides of it, which one of those sides includes Nazis, and you say both sides, clearly that means you're not condemning the Nazis. Clearly. Clearly. I I don't understand that. Like, that's one of those things that just irritates the crap out of me. Where do people get the idea that for just because for some reason he didn't say white supremacists, he, he didn't say, I condemn the white supremacists. I mean, don't get me wrong. He could have said, I condemn both antifa or the white and the white supremacists not or i'm sorry you know he could he could have said that but he didn't have to you know why he didn't have to because there was only two sides involved and he said both and it's not like anybody had to be told who was involved everybody knew who was involved but the fact of the matter is is that it was an atrocious um, incident um, someone lost their life because of it. In fact, technically, three people lost their lives because of it. The only reason why those police officers were in those was in that helicopter was because they, because of the riot. If the riot hadn't been going on, the police officers would never have been there. 
and the actual incident with the woman, it, it was a tra it's a tragedy. It's honestly atrocious. It doesn't matter if she was right, left, Canadian, Asian, Russian, American. It doesn't matter who the hell she was. The fact that she died because of something so stupid, something so atrocious as this, is was ridiculous. And I condemn every last bit of it. But I also condemn, of course, the left for being there to help instigate the problem. They're part of the problem, and they won't admit to their own hand in what's going on. They don't recognize the literal repeating of, of history, where the left goes so radical that the right has to go radical to counter it. And in turn, we end up getting Nazis, apparently. But anyways, moving on from that, let's go on into Boston. Now, the thing about Boston, before I actually show this article that I have here, um, very big important thing about it, Boston didn't have any white supremacists there. Neither were they any kind of like Nazis or oriented towards, you know, nat I don't think they were heavily nationalism. I think the majority of them were just basically Trump supporters. But they were actually fairly leftist. But Antifa went there to counter-protest counter them because they thought they were Nazis. They thought they were... I don't know if it was a miscommunication thing. I don't know if it was something that they just didn't realize was going on. Or if it was something else altogether. But let's go ahead and look at the article so we can get an idea of what's what went down. Alright, so here's the article. As you can see, this is from USA Today. Uh, they, uh, they were the first ones that came up in my in my new in my actual like Google search when I went to go look for some of the information on the Boston uh, riots. So I figured I would just click on the very first one because that usually is what most people would do, and I would give it an analysis. Now I've read and done a couple of things already on uh, the Boston uh, stuff that happened, and I'm gonna give my analysis on what I believe is true and what I necessarily what I think they're maybe lying about in this particular article so let's just go straight into it um so first of first paragraph here or a little sentence here or whatever it is by their sheer numbers thousands of anti-racist protesters marching through downtown boston on saturday effectively prevented conservative activists from mounting a free speech rally in the aftermath of the deadly clashes last week in virginia okay so let's break that down just a little bit we'll, we'll keep trying to keep it quick uh because of the video is already kind of long um, first of all, conservative activists, I'm not entirely positive I believe that that's true, um, from what I've seen. Uh, it seems like it's, for the most part anyways, there hasn't really been any, any actual evidence to believe that the individuals there who were essentially there for free speech weren't, were actually conservatives, other than the fact that they wore Trump hats, you know, the Make America Great Again hats. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't conservative, but from most of the evidence that I've actually received from like other news articles, uh, watching videos on YouTube, and getting some information about it and all, it all kind of comes up in the sense that th they were actually liberal. They were just like more conservative leaning than like the the alt left, uh, as so everyone has come to actually start to call them. So. What they're saying effectively is is that what what they're what, what we're effectively trying to say here in this very first paragraph is that they're saying almost a thousand like and this is very true because this is exactly what they did they prevented the actual rally from ever occurring and from as far as I can tell they prevented their own people from being able to make a free speech rally and this is one of the worst things this is literally just a rally for the concept of free speech for the ability to speak what you want to say, what to say what you want to, to do what you want to, to actually protect the one right that we've had since the beginning of our country that has protected us probably more than anything else, and that's our ability to speak our minds, to freely speak within the public about what we think and what we, what we want, and regardless of whether it's bad or good, but... Our freedom of speech is one of those protected rights that we've had forever. And 
it's literally come to the point to where they're shutting free speech completely down. Like, no one's allowed to have free speech. No one. And it's, it's ridiculous. Let's move on. I don't want to make this too long. Uh, only a handful of rally goers somewhere in red America great again. Make America great again. Uh, Trump caps uh, appear to navigate their way through waves of marches, pouring into Boston Common Area where the Boston Free Speech, which they put in quotes, and I'm not an English major or anything like that, so maybe that's a proper way of doing that, but when I read that, my first thought is, when I read that, is that's not them quoting a title or something. That's them putting up quotations around a title so that way they can make it seem like, oh, it's really not about free speech. During a post-rally press conference, Boston Police Commissioner William Evans thanked the most peaceful protesters and police officers. I'm just fortunate that none of the officers got hurt. None of the public got hurt. That was kind of weird. Said, said Evans, speaking with Boston Mayor Marty Welsh behind him. Overall, it was a good day for our city in that we won't tolerate hatred and bigotry. People came out to say Boston is united. Which is weird, because, like, nobody was out there to, to instigate hatred or bigotry. Like, that's my problem. This is the problem with news today. There's nothing in this about, like, nothing about what they were doing there in Boston that I've seen anyways that has anything to do with racism, Nazis, Confederates, white supremacy, anything. Nothing. Nothing. No sexism, no nothing. It was just people there speaking free about free speech and they were slightly conservative and they were trump hats because that's a crime nowadays i give give it a little while once trump's no longer president i almost promise you wearing that trump hat's gonna be a crime and, and you know i don't disagree with the sentiment i don't like the idea behind all of that is i don't i don't disagree with the idea that you're that we want to unite the world that we want to unite you know that people don't no because you know nobody wants to Nobody's in for racism. Nobody's in for any of that. It's just, it's dumb. It's dumb that they're not even, like, telling the truth here. Even the mayor, the mayor and the police chief, they're all sitting here talking about something that had nothing to do with Boston. Like, like they're basically, like, just virtue signaling their hatred towards bigotry and such because of what happened in Charlottesville, but they don't even pay attention to what actually happened in Boston. They're the mayor. It's the mayor and the police chief, and they don't even pay attention to what's going on. Like, what is that? What? That is the reason why we get this crap. That's the reason why we get this miscommunication from people. What happened in Virginia, what happened in Charlottesville, is actually dramatically different than what happened in Boston. One of the things that most people should actually understand is that there's a huge difference between the two. They are connected to one another because of what happened in Charlottesville and because of what's happening in Boston, they are connected. Because of the way that they're happening, they're connected. However, the problem is, is it's complete blind faith, almost. Especially on the, concert, on the alt-left side, where they're just going to protest something that has the word free speech in it because there might be Nazis involved because not only Nazis believe in free speech 15,000 counter protesters were peacefully marching towards the park where the rally area was blocked off by a ring of metal barriers thousands more descended in, on the area over in the next hour which that seems like a lot of pro counter protesters which I'm not against the counter protesting I don't but the problem is, is that there's no etiquette anymore. There's no there's no etiquette to this this kind of protesting. And this you will see and watch how even if they have like a line, a picket line of cops of of cones and stuff like that to sort of cordon off the area to sort of say, "Hey, look, this is our area. We're protesting over here. You guys can counter protest over there." sanctioned it by legal legality and everything else along those lines it doesn't matter they'll walk right over it they have no care in the world for other for other people's um, you know no etiquette no no politeness no no nothing they and this is the reason why they end up with the way they end up this is the reason why we are we are at the point that we are at because 
we have all these people, all these people who are just assuming the worst of everyone involved. It, it, this is the, the like the Charlotte's thing was horrible, and that's the reason why they are. But the only reason why the Charlotte's thing happened in the first place was because of the left. I'm not saying the right wasn't involved and they're not and that they weren't to blame. They are to blame. Of course they're to blame. They're fucking Nazis. Of course they're to blame. They went there with weapons. Of course they're to blame. But so did the so did Antifa. So did the alt left. They're both to blame. And this is what happens. Now they can't even see themselves in their own they see them they see their enemy in their in themselves. They get they go to counter a left leaning protest because there might be Nazis there. Oh, free speech must be Nazis. That's where it's going. That's where it's going, and that's the scary part. That's the part you got to think about. That's the scary part you really got to take into realization here. They're counter protesting free speech. That's all they're doing. They're just counter protesting free speech. They don't give a crap about Nazis and shit like that. They don't care. They don't care about fascism. They don't care about any of that. All they care about is their narrative and getting rid of free speech because free speech is harmful. It's scary. And this it's just only going to get worse. This is only going to get worse. We are going to probably, and, and that's, and it's just going to cause more and more people to join, join the fascists, to jo because they'll see them as the ones who make the most sense. We have people who are calling for the deaths of white people. We have people who are just straight up trying to get rid of all of our rights. They're just straight up protesting free speech. They scream and yell like babies and shame and, and scream yell and yell shame about all this crap just because they don't agree with someone. And it's gonna only get worse. It's 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 already gotten worse. Like from when it started. Like this has already escalated ten times worse than it ever was back when all of this stuff started. Back in 2016, it never got this escalated. I mean, it was never really quite this escalated in 2016. But now here we are in 2017, only a year later, and we are already on the level of where we might be seeing, like, militias going at each other. Straight up fights and brawls in the, in the streets. What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen once Trump gets out of office? What's going to happen when all of this happens? See, to me, Trump was a possible solution, but he's only become a Band-Aid at this point. Eventually, we're going to have to remove that Band-Aid, and what are we going to replace it with? There's still a festering wound underneath it, and a Band-Aid ain't going to do it. We need something that's actually going to, like, fix this. We need someone who can fix this, who can actually bring some... And I know it... I, I was hoping it would be Trump, but it's not, it's not going to be Trump. And I understand that. I'm fine with that. At least for now, we have the Band-Aid covering it up from bleeding everywhere. You know what I mean? But this is this is the crazy part, guys. And I'm sorry that I kept I went on our big rant there. Uh, I realized I didn't go over the article very much, and I wanted to, but it's okay. I think you guys got my general idea and my opinion and my overall concept of what's going on here and what I believe of what happened. So I think I'll probably leave it there. I certainly hope you guys did enjoy this video. Uh, if you did, you guys know the drill by now. Go on and hit that like button if you liked it. If you really liked it, go on and hit that share button. And if you loved it and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, guys, good luck out there. And don't forget to have fun.